Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, Noah's Ark. According to the information in ancient religious texts like the Bible and the Torah, a man named Noah was charged with building a giant wooden ark to save the world's animals from the Great Flood. Religious manuscripts would have us believe that the legendary ark landed on Mount Ararat, a sleeping volcano near the eastern border of Turkey. New 3D scans of this exact area have revealed what could be the lost ark. Scientists have uncovered a boat-like structure beneath the ground that matches almost the exact dimensions of Noah's Ark the way it's described in the book of Genesis. Andrew Jones was the lead scientist on this project as well as Dr. Fethi Ahmet Yüksel from Istanbul University. They believe the results of their scans show irrefutable proof that a giant boat is buried underneath the mountain. Even though it's impossible to say for sure whether this really is Noah's Ark from the Bible, there is definitely, according to the experts, an underground boat. They say the right angles identified in the scans are not something seen in nature or in any geological formation. Whatever's underneath the mountain certainly appears to be man-made. But of course, other members of the scientific community remain skeptical. And because of this, gathering the needed funds and getting the grants and permissions to excavate at the site has so far proven impossible. I guess we'll never know for sure if this really is Noah's Ark until Mount Ararat is excavated. And without additional evidence, this remains unlikely. Until then, it will continue to be a mystery as to whether there truly was a boat large enough to contain two of every animal in the world's population of species. What do you think? Could this be Noah's Ark? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. Roman Chariot Burial in Croatia, archaeologists have unearthed the incredible remains of a Roman chariot buried along with two horses. Both the horses and the chariot were fossilized by the time archaeologists dug them up. They say the elaborate burial was probably part of a ritual performed by an extremely wealthy family. This family was so rich that when one of their own died, they were able to kill two perfectly good horses and dispose of an extremely valuable chariot just for the sake of sending the deceased off to the afterlife with some treasures. It was experts with the Institute of Archaeology in Zagreb who made the discovery near the small village of Stari Jankovici. They have so far been able to date the remains of the horses and the chariot to between 1700 and 1800 years ago. That means they were buried around the 3rd century AD, at a time when the Roman Empire controlled the region. In fact, the Roman Empire had been in control of what is today Croatia ever since 168 BC, when they conquered the last Illyrian king, Gentius. By the 3rd century, Rome was in control of all of Croatia. They had built roads to link the Black Sea with the Aegean Sea and both seas to the Danube River. And while you might think the chariot is the most interesting part of the burial, archaeologists are actually more intrigued by the horses. They are hoping to discover where the horses were bred. If they can figure out where in the empire the horses came from, they can get more information about the wealthy family that owned them. Number 8. Iron Age Weapons Hoard An amazing hoard of Iron Age weapons was recently found in Germany. Archaeologists made the remarkable discovery with help from the small town of Schmallenberg, high up on the Witzenberg mountain. The excavations were ongoing for three years with experts slowly but surely pulling one weapon at a time out of the dirt. It's become the largest weapon hoard in the region and shows the complex processes of Iron Age steel workers. The weapons have also helped to reveal more information on the ritual activities of warriors thousands of years ago, specifically after they had already won a great battle. The Vilsenberg Mountain was visited by people around the year 300 BC for special occasions. On the very top of the mountain, Archaeologists found the remains of a fortification made of nothing but wood and rock and dirt. Then, between 2018 and 2020, historians with metal detectors combed the sides of the mountain and plucked at least 100 weapons out of the ground, all of them belonging to the ancient Celts. The evidence seems to suggest that there was a great battle that took place in the area surrounding the mountain. Then, to celebrate the victory, the warriors brought all the weapons they captured from their dead enemies, as well as other things like belts and horse harnesses. They then mangled the weapons as best they could, bending swords, breaking harnesses, and putting them up on display in the mountain. 
Researchers say this was a pretty common ritual during the Iron Age. Warriors, instead of taking the weapons of their dead enemies and using them for something useful, destroyed them in a violent display of power. Number 7. Yorkshire Abbey Bowling Alley During the medieval period, Fountains Abbey in Yorkshire was a hub of industrial activity. Today, it's one of the most tranquil places in all of England. But geophysical surveys and the use of ground-penetrating radar have revealed the buried remnants of structures and buildings from centuries past. The radar scans revealed what archaeologists called an underground bowling alley. But in fact, it's just a medieval tannery. It looks a bit like a bowling alley because of how it turned out in the scans. In reality, this is a place where monks would have processed animal hides, turning normal hides into leather. This would have been a huge industry that made plenty of profit, meaning hundreds of people would have been employed here before the area was nothing but a grassy green field. To understand why this is so interesting, you really have to look at Fountains Abbey today. Nothing remains except the peaceful remnants of the abbey. Nobody would expect that at the time the abbey was functional, the entire valley was part of an industrial tannery. Researchers with the University of Bradford identified at least two substantial stone buildings, one of them likely several stories tall and over 100 feet long. Picture a medieval factory, only this one filled with monks working over raw animal hide to produce leather. Number 6. World's Oldest Jewelry Archaeologists excavating the Bismoon Cave in the southwest of Morocco came across something truly exceptional and one of a kind. They found the oldest jewelry in the world, a shell necklace that dates back roughly 150,000 years. The necklace was once composed of approximately 33 shell beads, worked from being normal shells into cute baubles befitting a necklace. This is without a doubt the very oldest singular piece of jewelry ever worn by a human being at least the oldest that scientists have been able to find. But just who were these people making shell necklaces while Homo sapiens were still living in caves? This was 140,000 years before the first city on Earth began to even take shape. From what the researchers with the National Institute of Archaeological Sciences and Heritage say, the shells and the style of the beads resemble the Aterian culture from North Africa. These people thrived in the Middle Stone Age, Stephen L. Kuhn from the University of Arizona says the necklace was probably not only for embellishment, but a way for a person to express their identity and maybe even their personality through clothing. What this means is that the shell necklace was one of the very first ways of showing off who someone was as a person for the world to see. Isn't it incredible that humans and their near relatives were adorning themselves even 140,000 years before they lived in cities? I guess those 90s puka shell necklaces were really following an ancient trend. And now for number 5. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Carrie Aubrey and Martin Rooney. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe because we have lots more videos of discoveries coming up. Number 5. Theater Toilets An archaeological dig in Turkey has discovered a theater commode in the old city of Smyrna. This ancient city can be found within the modern borders of Izmir, with the theater being over 2,000 years old. It dates to the 2nd century BC, but was used up until the 5th century AD. That's about 700 years, or about 7 times longer than humans have been going to the cinema. Now let me explain why discovering this ancient commode was so shocking. There are plenty of old theaters spread across Turkey, Greece, and Rome. But this is one of the first times that scientists actually found the remains of a private bathroom complex inside a theater. The commode is shaped like a U and could have accommodated about 13 people at a time. Beside it was a trough that probably would have contained clean water. Scientists are now saying that the toilet, because it was discovered backstage and not where the public spectators would have been, was used by the actors. This may just be the very first example of actors having their own private facilities. 2,000 years before any of our modern celebrities, theater performers in the Roman Empire were already getting special treatment. They had their own toilets and their very own clean water. Number 4. The Illicit Lives of Convicts A stash of coins was recently discovered at Port Arthur in Tasmania, giving us a glimpse into the illicit lives of convicts over a century ago. The reason the coins are so interesting 
is that prisoners at Port Arthur working in the penal colony were not allowed to carry money. And yet this pile of silver shillings, which was worth about a week's salary for one of the overseers of the penal colony, was found buried underneath a workshop. Archaeologists were immediately fascinated by this mystery and wanted to get to the bottom of it. According to the conservation project officer Silvana Sidzik, the discovery was immediately seen as out of place. Convicts did sometimes have coins, but this amount of money was just too substantial. The coins were underneath the clay floor of a workshop where the prisoners would have been forced to do copper casting. Historians at the site believe whichever convict buried these coins in the clay floor managed to steal them from an officer and then hide them away for later use. But of course, this prisoner never was able to make it back and reclaim what he had stolen. The silver shillings came from between 1814 and 1844, so they were probably stolen sometime in the 1850s. The prison workshop was operational from between 1830 until about 1877, back when Tasmania was a full-blown penal colony. People were shipped from all over the world to do their time making shoes, working iron, and forming copper. Number 3. Roman Kitchenware In Bulgaria, archaeologists have been excavating a Roman legionary camp from over 2,000 years ago. What's really interesting isn't the camp itself, but the discovery of Roman kitchenware, including pots and lids, bowls, drinking vessels, and ordinary cups. All the kitchenware was found inside the officers' quarters, all of it made from such good quality clay that the bowls could still be used today. The officers' quarters is known to the archaeologists as the House of Centurion. It's an absolutely huge building, looking more like a luxurious villa than the house for a military commander. The complex had a courtyard, a pool, various buildings, and a massive dining room. Judging by the sizes of the dishes, food was only prepared for the Centurion and his deputies or a small group of guests. Archaeologists were also able to look at nearby animal bones to determine that the food eaten by the Centurion was much better than what his legionnaires ate. Basically, if you were a Roman commander, you lived a life of absolute luxury. But honestly, who's surprised? Number 2. Lost Statues Archaeologists in Turkey have discovered lost statues of Aphrodite and Dionysus. These amazing sculptures were uncovered in what was once the Greek city of Eisenoi. It was occupied as early as the Bronze Age. The city was a major source of political and economic influence in the Hellenistic period of Greece. But then, in 133 BC, the city was given to Rome and it became part of the Roman province of Phrygia Pacatiana. One of the most impressive structures still preserved in the city is the Old Temple of Zeus. The archaeologists didn't uncover the whole statues, just the heads of the gods. Aphrodite was the Greek goddess of love and beauty, while Dionysus was the god of wine, feasting, and ritual madness. They were pivotal figures in Greek religion and myth. The reason it's so interesting that the statues were found here is that it shows how the Romans continued to worship Greek gods, even if they did change their names long after they took over their cities. Considering the incredible parallels between Greek and Roman mythologies, this makes perfect sense. Number 1. The Falkland Islands Wolf Archaeologists working in the Falkland Islands have discovered evidence that humans made their way to this remote archipelago about 1,070 years ago. Even more interesting, evidence shows that these visitors may have brought fox-like creatures with them, known as wara. These creatures are what we know of today as the extinct Falkland Islands wolves. For a long time, scientists have been debating how the only land mammal here made it across the ocean. The two theories are that the wolves either reached the Falkland Islands by a land bridge or were brought over by people. But until recently, almost no evidence has been discovered of a human presence on the island prior to Europeans arriving in 1690. Now, archaeologists have found traces of ancient fires and the remains of animals that had been hunted over 1,000 years ago. From what they can tell, the Falkland Islands were inhabited by the Yagan people, which were ancient seafarers. This evidence comes in the form of charcoal levels in sediment, showing that humans were building fires from between 1,070 and 620 years ago. That's much earlier than the traces of European fires found from roughly 250 years ago. Plus, archaeologists found huge piles of the remains of sea lions and penguins. 
These animals were killed before Europeans hunted them to extinction in 1875. But the real mystery is that researchers have identified teeth from the Falkland Islands wolf that date back 3,860 years. That leaves a 2,000 year gap between the wolves and the humans. It's impossible to say now whether humans visited earlier and brought these wolves with them, or if the wolves had somehow made their way to the extremely remote archipelago by themselves, perhaps by a thin strip of land that is now buried under the ocean. Thanks for watching! Which of these incredible archaeological discoveries did you find the most fascinating? The coin stashes, the ancient toilets, mysterious wolves? Let me know in the comments below! And remember to subscribe if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!